Today, we're going to talk trauma, which was founded 50 years ago. It's pretty crazy. And since then, it's launched the careers of Trey Parker, Matt Stone, Samuel L. Jackson, and um, James Gunn. And, uh, you know, it's paved the way for independent filmmakers. <laughs> see you. This was supposed to, I was supposed to be at the uh, Angry Clarinet Nerd uh, po podcast. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you want to hear more? I'm really <laughs> sure. Good. We could just do that all day. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Uh, Today, we're talking trauma with a legend that co-founded it all. But before we get into it, let's talk about today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Available on PC and mobile, fight your way through a massive campaign, team up with other players for gigantic PvE boss battles, or fight them in global PvP matches for all the glory. And with over 600 champions, you'll be sure to find the perfect team for you. Like champions from the Dark Elves faction, which features some of my favorites. I mean, who doesn't like an evil elf assassin? Or an elf with terrifying wings, and their outfits are something to behold. Plus, they're a ton of fun to play with in a team, especially against some of those seriously tough clan bosses. And there's really never been a better time to jump in, and if you use my link in the description or scan the QR code on screen, new players will get a free starter pack worth almost $30 to kickstart their game. Not only will you get a free champion Aina, but also 200,000 silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and the 1 Ancient Shard so you can summon an amazing champion as soon as you get in-game. You'll find these rewards in your inbox here for the next 30 days only. It's that easy. Again, just click the link in the description below or scan the QR code on screen. Well, you mind if I sit uh, down for a minute? Too? Sure, I would love that. Go ahead. There's a, a, ma a magazine on this seat oh, or something. Look, but, at uh, the, look what just happens to be yeah. here. Oh, there you go. I, okay. I, I couldn't have. Uh, Toxies Trauma, uh, trauma Adult com, uh, Coloring Book. A coloring book now. Now you have to stay within the lines, James. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> the only children's coloring book that'll get you arrested. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's just well, for, you know, not for kiddies. Well, but it's very well done. The, uh, yeah, these uh, great selection of artists. And um, uh, Tom D'Amico, it was uh, edited by uh, Tom D'Amico, a very talented uh, trauma-raised filmmaker who's now making his own damn movies. Yep. <laughs> so uh, that's for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, that looks great. Those illustrations are amazing in there. Viacom can't come close. 50 years. Uh, yeah, long 50 time. Years. 50 miserable years. Yeah. <laughs> Because I remember the last time we interviewed you, we said 40 years. So that was, yeah. That's right. Yeah, it seems like is. it hasn't been that long. That is very true. How yeah. interesting. And you know what's really interesting? Because you are a major celebrity in the Tromaville world and oh, a well, god, may I say. But um, uh, w when we did our, 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 our episode, it, it, the climax was a huge uh, diarrhea on uh, the Toxy video games. Yeah, and yeah. the Toxic Avenger of my baby. <laughs> Oh, you shitty oh. shit game. How do you oh. like that? But uh, oddly enough, today I had a huge case of diarrhea. I haven't oh. had diarrhea since after, since I was in Chad, 1960. No, I had it in China in 1979. I had a terrible diarrhea. But um, I think it's an emotional thing because uh, I didn't eat anything uh, terribly uh, diuretic. So I think it's just the, the, your intense idealism, <laughs> uh, success, creativity, and uh, being such a nice guy. And you're very attractive, if I may say. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and, uh, if you get thank lonely, you. you know, Uncle Lloyd is here. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that very much. <laughs> what What is your next big project, James? Uh, my next big project? Um, Let's see. I mean, what what is, is there something special you're well, working on? Uh, plenty of things, actually. Uh, let's see. Well, I mean, I, I have a book coming out, hopefully soon, which is inspired by your book. Uh, about all, all I need to know about uh, uh, filmmaking I learned from, from the Toxic, Toxic Avenger. Oh, that's which, a great book. Yeah, I read that about 20 years ago or something, <laughs> and that was what really made me think, oh, I should, I should kind of write down my experiences, too. Definitely. About making movies. 
And one of the important things to teach people a lot of times is that movie making, it's not all just fun and easy. There's lots of hardships that go with it. So I noticed how you were very brutally honest in that book and lots of things that you read. So I felt, you know, it would be very um, useful and uh, valuable for people to read who are looking to go into the arts in any way. You're successful. And that is, the, the, my seven books are all full of bile and bitterness. And <laughs> the best one that I did is called Sell Your Own Damn Movie. That one is, is really uh, mm -hmm. useful. And um, it's the only, everything that I have created and Choma has created over 50 years, 5-0, uh, is on the streets of China. We get no money. And in my book, uh, Sell Your Own Damn Movie, I proposed that file sharing and things like that were great for the independent artists because we want people to see our work, right? We, we do this for our fans. We do it because we have something to say. So, so um, it, it's uh, really quite fascinating the way it goes, uh, you know. And uh, you're, you've got an inspiring uh, upward story. And mine is just, a, you know, kind of bitter old man. But they do sell. I mean, the kids want to learn how to do it. And, and, you know, they have to learn that you just don't go and there's a magical movie bank and you get the money. <laughs> and yeah. Also, a lot, and I know that you're, you agree, a lot of the younger uh, directors, they feel it's uh, low class, you know, kind of shy, Jewish to go out and promote and to, uh, you know, it's low class, you know. Uncle Lloyd, wears a bow tie at can and dresses like a clown. I mean, this is kind of, you know, it's a different kind of clown. But the point is, you got to put, who else is going to do it? Do you know, have you ever heard of hack movies by any chance? Hack the movies? Hack the movies? Yeah, uh, maybe. Well, maybe, Tony, yeah. Tony, uh, I slept with him once. He told <laughs> me that he, all he does, that's what he does. He's not embarrassed. He's proud of it. And he's doing great. Maybe, we can probably cut the part out where I slept with him. Actually... <laughs> <laughs> it was very. <laughs> no. a little, it was a little. I think he's okay with it now, so you can probably. Actually, you can probably let it go. Um, I have a literary agent uh, uh, who, whose career I've kind of ruined. So uh, oh, okay. <laughs> the royalties okay. he gets from my books are like yeah. that. Is the Sell Your Own Damn Movie your favorite of the damn movie series? I, I think I think it's the most useful. And okay. as I was going to say, it's the only thing I've ever been involved in where China or Chinese company paid, uh, actually paid for it. it uh, the publisher sent us a box of Chinese uh, books <laughs> in Chinese. Oh, really? That's the only thing that we did, of course, did, you know, we, whatever royalties we get. But uh, every movie we've ever made, and there are hundreds of, uh, of movies and distributed movies, never a penny nothing. So I don't mind if some kid's in his basement and he sends a copy of uh, Hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm, uh, which I got to remember to promote today. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm. If they share it, so what? You know, uh, uh, in fact, we get a lot of calls from bars. They want to show uh, a trauma movie. No problem. What? It's advertising. You know, people, mm -hmm. I, I can't understand why the big com movies, the big movie companies who spent $200 million after the movie's made to promote it. Why don't they let the media on the set? Why does everything have to be such a secret? Basically, in Guardians of the Galaxy, I wore a pair of yellow pajamas. I mean, that's it. And I couldn't even go to the... Uh, uh, the, the lavish uh, food <laughs> area, uh, you know, the food which is more expensive than the Toxic Avenger movie, the, the old one. And uh, uh, I had to put a bathrobe over it, to, you know, because it was so secret. And same thing on uh, oh, really? <laughs> James Gunn uh, gave me a, a little part in uh, Suicide Squad. Same thing. I just had on a, whatever I've got in the movie. <laughs> oh, know, yeah. <laughs> a short sleeve shirt and oh, wow. <laughs> blue jeans. <laughs> But they, this, wow. and, and with Trey Parker, uh, when I interviewed him on the set of uh, uh, Team America, uh, the, uh, um, the PR people wanted to kick me out. And, and Trey uh, kind of yelled at him and said, don't, don't you know who this is? This is Lloyd Kaufman. Because <laughs> the other people there were the New York Times. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. so they did uh, let me interview them. Oh, and that, okay. that's a very good interview, by the way, oh, uh, wow. with Trey and Matt. You appeared in two films that premiered the same night. It was Guardians of the Galaxy and Two Blocks Away from the Al Capitan at the Egyptian <laughs> Angry Video Game Nerd, the movie you also appeared in. Yay! So. <laughs> Yay! Well, thank you. Yeah. And, uh, well, hold it. You you are going to be uh, in the... Uh, air, uh, 
heady atmosphere of the Museum of the Moving Image when hashtag, oh, no, no, sorry, you're in Return, Return, to, Return to Nukem High, Nukem too. High. Yeah, the, yeah. the Moving Image premiered it there also, the Moving Image Museum. Oh, cool. It had the New York premiere there. It was a big deal. Very good. Oh, nice. And thank you again for filming your hilarious uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> scene. It was great. It was oh, cool. And of course, the minute the audience sees you. You know, uh, if it's me, it's like one person knows who I am. You, the whole place went crazy. Uh, uh, the two times I've seen the film with a big audience. This game is the biggest piece of shit. No, no, no. This game isn't a piece of shit. It's all. Cool. So in 50 years um, of doing this, how have things changed? Now, of course, you know, film was on film. There was no internet, stuff like that. But... Even in the past 10, 15 years, things have changed a lot. They're always changing. So, yeah, yeah, so how, yeah. what ways have you seen? Uh, I think the biggest overall change is um, that uh, the industry has become so consolidated. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've the laws that used to protect the public against monopoly have been done away with. They've been canceled. So uh, all the, the uh, consent decree of 1948 that forbade a, a Viacom from owning theaters, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's gone. The studios can own theaters now. Uh, all of these little things that helped us out in the 70s and 80s, they're gone. And uh, So it's kind of uh, like going back to where it was like in the 30s, 40s kind of, right? Like, yeah, we, uh, except it's, it's bigger and fewer artists. It's, big, it's mm -hmm. certainly more business. And you don't, you know, people like Samuel Fuller, who did work for the studios, Fritz Lang, uh, you know, all those, John Ford, Howard Hawks, Chapel, all of them, uh, they were able to do what they pretty much had freedom. I, I, I think today everything is committee. And, ooh, so sorry. you started your own uh, distribution, your own uh, streaming uh, service, Troma Now. Yes, sir. Well, here's something. Uh, you guys who want to make movies, uh, and if you're old, uh, young people. Mm -hmm. is totally fan-fueled, except mm -hmm. for Michael Hers and two other people. We're all uh, uh, you know, under 21, probably. No, uh, 20, under 30. Uh, but but uh, they're the ones who have the crazy ideas. And uh, uh, my daughter was interning at uh, what became Vimeo. Oh, okay. uh, before it was VMX or VXX or something. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just starting this idea of uh, streaming. And she said, gee, I'm here. I'm, uh, this looks great. You ought to try it. And uh, it took me a while to get Michael Hers uh, into it, but uh, now it's a it's a great. And Vimeo bought them, of course, and uh, mm -hmm. we had to build an app. You know, we built the app, which uh, was very expensive, but it's it's working. Troma now is very good. You get thousands of movies, you get all the Troma produced movies, you get uh, uh, how make your own damn movie uh, videos. You get uh, beautiful women uh, like uh, Troma Super Tromets uh, photograph uh, collections and. Uh, uh, music videos uh, that we've made, and uh, anyway, there's probably a thousand movies there, uh, plus all the trauma in-house productions, and you'll see James uh, Rolfe in a few uh, few things on trauma now. It's oh, the future, <laughs> James, but oh, yeah. now the future, but oh, now, oh yeah, yeah, and it's it's slowly going up. You think there's more of an avenue opening up recently for? independent films that aren't necessarily feature length, like making, you know, a, pl a place for short films, because it seems like beef before it was more like, okay, if you make a feature, you can show it in a theater and everything. It's always about making a feature. Cause I've been asking myself this, do I really want to make a feature or do I want to make a short? Because I was working on a horror film, uh, wrote it feature length, but then I started thinking about a way to, uh, to condense it to make it a better film in the long run, actually, because mm -hmm. I think it works better as a 30-minute film. Plus, it's going to be a lot more feasible to shoot because I eliminated a lot of locations, uh, even a lot of characters in it that, that are very, you know, characters that appear very incidentally, like in one scene or something. It's a lot easier to shoot. Still a project, still a big one, but... As a 30-minute film with only, like, mainly two locations, it's... Oh, well, it's smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I guess the only question is, like, I, where to show something like that? Well, Besides you know, YouTube, but, you know... <laughs> well, you, you have yeah. enough strength. I think you've got a, enough strength, so uh, you would be able to monetize it. Uh, you, you have a huge... Well, you know that. I, I don't think you have a problem. But also, uh, they, due to all the series, I think the public is getting trained for 
shorter bite tools. Uh, yeah, have, for everybody, like, is there like a place for short films yeah, to I be think, made I'm by? Sh- I'm sure uh, there is. I just don't know of it. But mm-hmm. I know Troma now, we have a sh- shitload of shorts. <laughs> okay. And they're terrific. They're all these people, talent, Ooh. wonderful. Like all different lengths, like. Uh, yeah, some, all different mm-hmm. uh, nationalities. And, you know, cool. the Troma Dance Film Festival in its 23rd year, uh, I think Tony was at it uh, in the Mahoning uh, drive-in uh, oh, yeah, two yeah. years ago. But uh, we've had it there two years. We're going to do it again this summer. And uh, it's a festival we set up where you can submit your movies. You don't have to pay uh, to submit. And a lot of the movies we show are shorts. And they're terrific. And the audience mm-hmm. loves it. I, it. That's probably a great space to start, you know, short channel or something. Uh, the Show Your Shorts Film Festival. Yes. That's, a good name. That's a good name. <laughs> get, uh, get Toxie, uh, Peter Dinklage, as the uh, spokesperson. Oh, wow. He's in, um, um, he just opened in Cyrano, and he mm-hmm. plays the Toxic Avenger in the Cabillion Dollar remake. So oh. uh, he's very good. Uh, oh, no, yes. Is and he's short, uh, uh, he's short, so uh, short. Oh, cool. Sh- show me your shorts. And oh, yeah, you get show Peter, me your shorts. Peter to do the, instead of Elvira, yeah, Peter, he's brilliant, too. Funny, smart, loves trauma, you know, he, I'm sure he knows you. Oh, good awesome. guy, good guy. Oh, cool. And uh, I've never met him, sorry, but a very good guy. Oh, cool. I did, uh, when I was in Bulgaria where we shot, <laughs> I went to a, I was only there a few days, and there's a, I see this guy over here, he looks exactly like uh, Peter. And I, 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 I went over to him, hey, and I start kissing his ass, and I love you, and you know, I just made hashtag Shakespeare's shitstorm, making Blair loves it, and, and, uh, um, and he's looking at me like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and then a lady from back, uh, he, he don't speak English. He don't speak uh, no English. And he was the uh, stand-in. Oh, but he, he, but he looked very similar. <laughs> yeah, to yeah. yeah, well, I don't know. Do you Peter still get Dinkley, the, uh, you get the Mel Brooks thing a lot? Yes, still? Yeah. in airports, <laughs> in airports. So young people, get young people. Don't let an old fart uh, tell you what to do. <laughs> the main thing is plan B, safety to humans <laughs> Uh, uh, make uh, uh, safety to humans, safety to people's property, so you don't damage somebody's home. And then smaller print, make a good movie. Yeah, Very important. Right, yes. They won't even review our films half the time. We have to beg them. We have to practically blow them to, to, uh, <laughs> to just to get a review, <laughs> to give them the privilege of of shitting on us. <laughs> The privilege this of This has shitting. been a real diuretic uh, interview, yes. James. Thank you oh, so yes, much. Yes, it has. Now, I speaking feel, of feel, shit, uh, yes. well, hashtag Shakespeare shitstorm. Yes. Um, you're saying that this is your final film. Is that certain? I think I, I would bet on it. Yeah, I just, unless something comes across, I mean, I'm working on stuff, developing mm-hmm. uh, Martin Murray and I, uh, he works with Steve Martin, um, and uh, he and I are working on a script. But it's kind of a, a about me, funny. Not it's not about me, but something like me. Yeah. And then yeah. it goes into crime and punishment kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So it, it's you remember Salt Lake City Punk. Uh, yeah. It was kind of goofy teenage movie, and mm-hmm. then suddenly it makes a sharp mm-hmm. right turn, and everybody's uh-huh. dead or whatever. You know, if it, if the, if it's something that really, you know, I got yeah. obsessed with this uh, tempest. Other... The tempest I was obsessed with from the time I was like nine years old. My mother took it. It took me to see it at the Stratford on Avon in Connecticut. Richard Burton played uh, Caliban. Lee Remick played uh, Miranda. Roddy McDowell played Ariel. <laughs> I just watched it uh, before I came in today. and uh, well, It is the most faithful version of The Tempest. Uh, hashtag Shakespeare oh, shitstorm. Oh, oh yeah. great. Well, thank you. And I think Shakespeare it's, would like it. Yeah, yeah. It's what he always wanted, right? Well, I, I know he had a preference for uh, amputations uh, and uh, head crushings. Mm-hmm. I believe he may have done the first head crushing, but mm-hmm. unlike uh, Michael Hers, uh, he used a uh, he didn't use a melon to crush the head. Uh, mm. He didn't have melons in Shakespeare's time. Mm. So this movie has a whale um, shitting all over a boat, and this is. Probably the most shit I think I've ever seen in one film. Say, uh, hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm was hell. And as a matter of fact, at the end of it, I mean, it was the greatest actors, the greatest team. Yeah, Everybody you, was a fan. A, yeah, you have a lot of regulars that seem like a really great group of dedicated people because I've noticed them in like film after film now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that takes a lot of commitment 
Well, uh, also uh, the sacrifice, because, you know, I, the people who work for us, most of them are Hollywood type. You know, I don't mean Hollywood, but they're mainstream. You know, they get paid like mm -hmm. 10 times more. Uh, mm -hmm. But we let them do, you know, A, we have a lot of young people like Rock, Rocco Zevenbergen. Uh, you know, he were, he was on hashtag Shakespeare shitstorm at, uh, I think he was like eight years old when he became the grip. And uh, no, I'm joking. But, uh, you know, <laughs> young people like that who are just getting their foot in the, in the mm -hmm. uh, water, dipping their toe. And uh, yeah. so they're all great, and especially on this film. It, very demanding. The cast was incredible. I mean, I, I can't, you know, it was actually a pleasure. It was a pleasure to get up in the morning and go, you know, get up at uh -oh. the hangover and, you know, yeah, find yeah. my way to the set. <laughs> <laughs> and, How uh, stressful was, would you say in comparison with uh, previous trauma films? Like, where would it rank? That's a good question. Because uh, Poultry Guy's Night of the Chicken Dead, if you see the behind-the-scenes documentary, it was yeah. it's total chaos. Mm -hmm. And it's hilarious. That documentary, uh, everyone who works for trauma since Poultry Guy's is required to watch Poultry in Motion, Truth is Stranger Than Chicken. Uh, because you can see, you sleep on the floor, there are fistfights breaking out, people fucking each other in the corner. I mean... <laughs> You know, uh, just incredible stuff. Uh, we had a McDonald's that we used. We took it over, an empty one, obviously. But it was had everything in it. Hmm. But uh, they, the only requirement was we weren't allowed to have uh, nakedness in the McDonald's. But our headquarters was in a church, uh, a no longer used church. So we, <laughs> we, we did the sex in the church. <laughs> <laughs> the church rather than the McDonald's. It, ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> so we, we built a piece of the... the mm -hmm. uh, uh, our, uh, American chicken bunker in the church uh, auditorium, uh, um, you know, party room, whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, it matches beautifully. <laughs> but how <laughs> ironic that <laughs> the junk food place that isn't even owned by anybody, it's just a, a dilapidated, uh, bankrupt place. Uh, everything was fine, no problem with guns, no problem with anything, just no nudity, no oh, sex. Yeah. The church was okay. <laughs> oh, wow. And, we, you know, we rented it. Uh, whoever, we, we, taught, we let them read the script. So. And I've noticed you act a lot in them. So you, lots of times you're, you're not afraid at all to put yourself in it and to get, you know, bloody and messy. And this one, you have a lot of prosthetics, all kinds of prosthetics, I will say. And this, basically, we, we probably can't even show an image, but this, um, <laughs> you know, suit you're wearing at the end is so crazy like what was that like getting in that that was at the end of the, the after literally immediately after filming uh the principal for time it was about six weeks including albania uh i got vertigo i made a tribute to my god alfred hitchcock i actually got vertigo i wow. had three days of like a hang you know i've had hangovers where the room spins i hadn't had any this was like a vertigo Wow. When, uh, three, uh, three days later, it uh, went away, but I, uh, the stress mm. built up. Mm. I mean, it's a huge I mean, You look at the movies. Yeah, yeah. And then sometimes you have an event over here, you know, a unit filming this, and then there's somebody, we have to film a little pickup uh, uh, in the bathroom, and, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's like a circus. But uh, great, so, this was the best, and I had a great time, and it was a lot of fun, at least for me. And uh, my wife produced with me uh, after uh, being the film commissioner. But uh, thank you. And um, thanks for watching uh, Hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm. I, I hate to uh, uh, ask you. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, a lawyer is never supposed to ask a question he doesn't know the answer. But what, di uh, what uh, did you think of it? And be frank. It's for your fans. It's everything you expect from trauma. It's probably, um, you know, it's, it's a little like terror firmer, a little like... Um little like class in Newcomb High. You know, it, it's, it's got some all those. You know, it's Shakespeare. It's like Tromeo and Juliet. Um, it has a lot of bodily fluids. I was very much um, Well, the impressed. question is, yeah. the question, you seem to be dodging my question. Uh, <laughs> did you like it? Oh, I liked it. Yeah, yeah. Now, on a scale of 1 to 10, <laughs> where, where one, would you put it? 1 to 10 on Tromeo. So, let's see. Well, you don't want to give everything a 10. I'd say 10 would be like... Well, I be say, honest. You don't have to, you know, I've, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been humiliated. You I, can't imagine how many like, times. Yeah, because I've had diarrhea now. Because I usually do, humiliate me. Because <laughs> I usually do not um, give number ratings no, to I'm films. Kidding. because I'm yeah. I'm just fucking yeah. with you. Don't, yeah, don't, you don't have I to come, answer it. I'm yeah, because I have to compare it. You're seeing how far I get. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's You'll probably ban me now. No, no. You'll cancel me, James. No. Oh, hey, by the way, I think, if I'm not mistaken, there is a very important, you know, the something... The people from the American Cinematheque uh, 
Oh my God, look at this. Official trauma diploma for James Wong. Oh, well, thank you. I don't thank believe you. it. <laughs> <laughs> if we could afford a frame, we would. Oh, yeah, we well, would I'll get a frame, no problem. <laughs> it's for, for, yes, yeah. <laughs> Well, th again, thank you. This is, it's great to talk to you because you love oh, yeah. cinema, you know. And, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, usually people say, uh, so uh, tell us, tell the audience exactly what do you do? <laughs> oh. <laughs> they have no um, idea. They'd come into it blind. So, anyway, you're a good guy. Thank you so much. Oh, sure. Thank you. Yeah. If you do so, any coloring in the official Toxie's mm -hmm. Trauma Adult Coloring Book, uh, take a picture and we'll post oh. it on there. But again, you create things. You want people to, you know, isn't that the joy? Yeah, yeah. As long as you're creating, then you've you've already become successful. I think it's sometimes it's hard to know that in the moment because yeah, well, everybody's trying to f become successful. But if you're doing it, then you're already there. It takes courage. You have to just, and it's lonely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, but you have to keep. You, you got to keep going. I mean, if somebody like me can put three kids to Yale and Columbia and do, what's the other Duke and graduate school and all that crap. Well, what would you if there's one trauma film that could go down in history as your legacy. Like, which one would you say it is? Which one would you like to ha be known for? I think she, I mean, again, Toxic Avenger mm -hmm. is a life of its own. And my guess is uh, Macon Blair's. His script is much better than the original. I think it will be better. There are sequels and prequels that are better than the originals and reimaginings. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> there's so many words for it now. But um, I'd say hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm. I, I really think that's a wonderful film. And, and I think anybody who likes Shakespeare, it's there. It's all there, and it's entertaining. And I know, Sha in fact, Shakespeare appears. I don't want to say where, but he's there. And uh, I went to visit Shakespeare's birthplace a long time ago uh, when they did a retrospective at the British uh, Film Institute. I went to visit his birthplace, and I was really inspired. And uh, Shakespeare's spirit entered my body, and uh, it has finally exited. I just can't tell you which... Orifice, Shakespeare's spirit has exited. But now Uncle Lloyd is full of the spirit of James Rolfe and the wonderful angry video game nerd. And thank you, James. No question about it. Oh, well, thank you. Thanks for coming by. And uh, this was awesome. It was great. Anything, anything for you, James. And uh, if you guys come across a good script that's very entertaining and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I can get some money. I just can't get a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, maybe well, there's something we can do. Uh, I produce and you... You do all the work. I take the credit. You know, the usual. <laughs> yeah. Well, on that happy note. <laughs>